Mortal Kombat is a series known for its bloody and brutal gameplay, its deep lore, and its unique and powerful characters. Most characters have a deep history within the world and well-defined goals they wish to achieve, whether it's vengeance, power, glory, or simply peace. For some, they crush everyone in their path, only stopping once they've achieved their goal. For others, they never seem to catch a break. They lose, they fail, they die, they may even lose their humanity. Yet despite these losses, there's one character that refused to give up, hung on to every ounce of humanity he had left, fought until his cold, dying breath for what he believed in. Kwai Liang, better known as Sub-Zero, has one of the most interesting character arcs in the NRS era. His brother is wrongfully hunted by a demon for a crime he didn't commit. He is later betrayed by this brother and is forcibly stripped of his humanity by his own clan. Yet despite all of this, he stays strong and resilient. He fights to make things right. Kwai Liang is a righteous man, whose story in the NRS era could have been immaculate. Imagine Cyber Sub-Zero fighting to keep his last shred of humanity, fighting to restore the humanity of his clan, fighting to restore the humanity of the demon deceived into killing his brother. Kwai Liang could have been so much more, but instead, what we got is fighting to even be interesting. Kwai Liang's story begins after the death of his older brother Bihan at the hands of Hanzo Hasashi, aka Scorpion. Scorpion believes Sub-Zero, Bihan, was responsible for the slaughter of his clan and family, so Hanzo swore vengeance and was resurrected by Quan Chi in the Nether Realm. He would then serve Quan Chi under the promise that he would get his revenge. Later, we learn that Sub-Zero was never responsible for the slaughter of the Shira Ryu, and it was Quan Chi's doing as a way to manipulate Hanzo, though I'll save the details for a Scorpion video. With the death of his brother, Kwai Liang assumed the mantle of Sub-Zero, and began hunting down Scorpion for what he did to Bihan. He starts by searching for people who may have information on the whereabouts of Scorpion. Finding himself in the Soul Chamber, he's first confronted by Cyrax, who's now been transformed into a robot and is attempting to capture Kwai Liang to grant him the same fate. He makes quick work of Cyrax and is then told by Sonya to check the Colosseum. However, before he leaves, he watches as Ermac wakes up and obliterates Jax's arms. Only after Jax loses his arms does Kwai Liang beat up Ermac, after which he leaves for the Colosseum to confront Scorpion. Upon reaching the Colosseum, he demands Shao Kahn bring him Scorpion. However, Shang Tsung makes him fight Reptile first. He beats him, but doesn't kill him, as he only wants Scorpion dead. After beating Reptile, Shao Kahn allows him to fight Scorpion. He beats Scorpion, but before he's able to kill him, he's jumped and captured by the Cyber Lin Kuei and is taken in to be made a robot. For my brother! No, you... We next see Kwai Liang as Cyber Sub-Zero in a confrontation with Cabal. Cabal manages to beat Cyber Sub-Zero and knock him out. Cabal, Smoke, and Raiden then bring Kwai Liang to the group where Jax attempts to sever his programming and give Kwai Liang his mind and free will back. Amazingly, this works. Kwai Liang even remembers the things he's done for Shao Kahn during this time. That's it. Here goes nothing. This will work. Hell no. I've never done this before. Not like this before. Sub-Zero? Can you hear me? You should. Sub-Zero. Yes, Smoke. How do you feel? Uh, what is it? I remember things I have done for Shao Kahn. You can 
not be allowed to merge the realm. Which, when you think about it, it's gotta be torture. Imagine being aware enough to remember all the terrible things that you were basically mind-controlled into doing, but being completely unable to stop it or control yourself. I really do pity most of the Cyber Lin Kuei. Most of them likely didn't want this. They were stripped of their flesh and subsequently turned into mind-controlled robots. And for as cool as the robots are, I can't help but be disturbed by the idea of this. It's a brutal and sympathetic plotline that unfortunately wasn't explored enough. Shortly after Kwai Liang wakes up, he's sent to go undercover as a spy on Shao Kahn. Cyber Sub is almost immediately found out by Sector as he attempts to report back to him. This leads to a fight that Cyber Sub Zero wins. He then takes the mission info from Sector and moves on to where he's supposed to be. The mission was to transport a few soldiers alongside Kano, Kintaro, and Goro. However, Kwai Liang freezes Kano and unshackles the soldiers. He then beats Kintaro and Goro at the same time. Like, like, guys, that's insane. Are you kidding? One Shokun is already insane, but two at once? That's absurd. And you could definitely chalk this up to his new robot body and the enhancements it comes with, which, whether intended or not, actually adds some merit to Sector and his goals of making the Lin Kuei as powerful as possible. Because I'm going to be honest, I don't think regular human Kwai Liang at this point in the story is doing this. This is an insane feat. It's already extremely impressive to beat Goro in a fair fight, but to beat him 2v1 in the way Kwai Liang did, it's almost unbelievable. And if this is the power the Cyber Initiative can bring to the Lin Kuei, they would be borderline unstoppable. Which again, adds to my point here, the Cyber Initiative could have been one of the most compelling stories in the NRS era if NRS simply stuck to their guns. This is really what I think has ruined MK storytelling. NRS just cannot commit to anything, and you'll see that this will be a common theme in my future MK videos, and this was the first sign of things to come. Shortly after his elite 2v1 clutch, Kwai Liang confronts his brother Bihan at the Soul NATO, learning he's been revived by Quan Chi and is now Noob Saibot. Noob tells Kwai Liang that Quan Chi has perfected him, and Bihan is completely content doing Quan Chi's bidding in exchange for power, even if it means going against his family and clan. They quote, share blood, but they are not brothers. You, you are not worthy of the name Sub-Zero. Who are you to judge? I wore those colors before you. Bihan? Yes, Kwai Liang. It is I. Quan Chi restored me. Restored? You and I both. We are flawed copies of our former selves. I have no flaws. Quan Chi has perfected me. For what end? To serve the Netherrealm and Outworld? It suits my purpose. But brother, we, we are... share blood. You're not brothers. Then I will not regret your defeat. So despite all that Kwai Liang has gone through, simply to try and avenge Bihan, Bihan still betrays him in the pursuit of power. As much as Kwai Liang hides it, this must be devastating. He nearly lost everything, including his humanity, because of Bihan. And unfortunately, things only get worse for Kwai Liang because just a little while later, Cyber Sub Zero, Kwai Liang, is killed in the fight versus Sindel alongside Cabal, Jax, Striker, Smoke, Jade, Katana, and Nightwolf in his self sacrifice. <laughs> Oh, 
by the Elder Gods. This isn't where Cyber Sub-Zero should have ended. I'm okay with everyone else at this point dying, and I actually really like Nightwolf's sacrifice too. But Kwai Liang should have survived. Not won, not beat Sindel, but he should have survived the encounter. This would still open the door for the Revenants, display Sindel's power and why Shao Kahn wanted her, and would open the door for new characters like Cyber Sub-Zero or 3D era characters to fill in the gaps left by those who died. To accomplish this, you could have had Cyber Sub-Zero take serious damage that would be fatal to non-robots, remove him from the fight, and allow for Nightwolf's sacrifice. This would have kept Cyber Sub-Zero alive for future plotlines involving the recovery of the Lin Kuei, themes of lost humanity, and character growth for Kwai Liang as he learns to cope with his new body or attempts to replace his human one. This would allow him to build a stronger bond with Scorpion as well as they would share similar trauma. Both are shells of their human selves, both lost their family and clan, and both were manipulated and or used by Quan Chi. This would have been a much more emotional story, creating a much stronger bond between them than what we got. Allowing Cyber Sub-Zero to survive versus Sindel would now give us multiple instances of how the robot enhancements proved to be extremely useful. Beating Goro and Kintaro at the same time, holding up against Sindel, and surviving should be lethal damage because of the robot body. This would be just a few more examples of why the Cyber Initiative proves useful to the Lin Kuei. This kind of manufactured power would certainly appeal to many members of the Lin Kuei, further driving conflict within the clan as it divides into those who wish to utilize the power of the Cyber Initiative and those like Kwai Liang who hate its corrupting nature, creating yet another compelling story I and many others would have loved to experience. However, these ideas will remain just as that. Ideas. As an MKX, the Cyber Initiative just seems to have vanished. What happened? Well, according to Kwai Liang, the entire Lin Kuei was cyberized, and Sector had achieved his goal. But, Kwai Liang killed Sector, and I guess the entire Cyber Lin Kuei with him? The Lin Kuei had been fully cyberized. I pledged to kill Sector and his followers. Reform the Lin Kuei and restore our honor. I am not interested in Lin Kuei politics, Sub-Zero. When I finally killed Sector, I discovered the Lin Kuei had not sacrificed its honor with the Cyber Initiative. We had abandoned it long before. Oh, and Kuai Liang's human now. Why? Well, in the only canon when NRS wants it to be comic for MKX, Quan Chi couldn't control Kwai Liang because he was, quote, resilient. This, together with his robot body, meant Quan Chi couldn't control him. So, Quan Chi removed his robot body and made him a new one, just so that he could keep Kwai Liang as his puppet. Then, Kwai Liang was free from his revenant form alongside Scorpion and Jax after a confrontation between Sonya, Johnny, and Raiden against Quan Chi and his revenants in his chamber nearly leads to the death of Johnny Cage and subsequently his transformation into a revenant. However, Raiden prevents this from happening, and as he does, he also manages to cure all of the revenants in the area. Yeah, this is hot garbage. By sheer chance and convenience for the writers, they cure Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and Jax. They had no idea how to naturally allow Scorpion and Sub-Zero to make up after they wrote themselves into a corner by killing Kwai Liang and MK9. Now, they make it sound like Sub-Zero is a legit god who took down the entire Cyber Initiative single-handedly, killed Sector, and got lucky that he had a memory of a deal he made with Quan Chi where Quan Chi explicitly says he killed the Shirai Ryu. The Lin Kuei need to abide their agreements, Sector. The Grand Master gave Shinnok his word. Shinnok's currency is lies, as is yours. Payment is due. I exterminated the Shirai Ryu, as promised. Hanzo Hasashi lives. He's your specter, Scorpion. I created Scorpion from Hasashi's soul after he died. We observed the agreement. The letter, not the spirit. You are owed nothing. For one, this makes Sub-Zero and Scorpion's relationship feel forced and not earned. Secondly, this is another display of horrendously inconsistent power scaling from the NRS era. And as we all know, there's a lot of that. 
So now, the cyber initiative is completely gone and had little to no effect on the Lin Kuei or really anything at all after MK9, only returning in MK11 as pawns of Kronika, in which they again did nothing. However, regarding the MK11 version of the cyber initiative, there is something I like about it. Frost. And while she deserves a video of her own, I love the idea of a corrupted protege of Kuai Liang learning about and wishing to revive the cyber initiative in the pursuit of power, even going as far as to cyberize herself willingly during her betrayal. This could have come about naturally without the whole Kronika thing if NRS just kept to their guns and made the cyber initiative a looming threat that Kuai Liang needed to overcome. Then imagine, after Kuai Liang regains his body and clan, finally moving past these horrific events, the best student he has, who could also act as a stand-in child of his, becomes corrupted by the pursuit of power and attempts to bring the Cyber Initiative back. This is way more interesting than the whole Kronika did it BS. But again, we can only imagine these kinds of scenarios and accept that we will never get this kind of storytelling from NRS. Instead, we'll continue to watch as they ruin plotline after plotline, rebooting the series every few years because they don't know how to build upon the foundations they set. It is really disappointing to me as I watch this franchise struggle to even come close to its former glory in terms of storytelling and lore. Even more so as I watch it get rebooted for the second time in just three games when they had so much to work with going into MKX. It's clear that they either just don't care about the story anymore or just don't know what the hell to do with it. Cyber Sub-Zero, or Kuai Liang, could have been so much more, and it's just the first of many examples of Mortal Kombat's narrative downfall. It's because of these flaws and NRS's inability to learn from them that we got another reboot. A reboot that came way too soon. I really do love this franchise, and because of that, I want what's best for it. The story since MK9 has easily been my least favorite thing about the NRS era. They seem to try and take their story seriously but fail to make it very interesting. I hope that by diving into its many characters, we can point out the flaws in their stories and come up with even better possibilities of what could have been. I hope to see you guys again in two weeks with another video, which will be on Raiden, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. As I learn the ropes of video essays and get more comfortable making them, I wish to get a video out every two weeks moving forward, and then one day, maybe even weekly, but we'll get there when we get there. I have been busy working and studying, so time has certainly been against me as of late, but it's been nothing your boy can't handle. If you made it to the end and enjoyed today's video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can see my next video the moment it comes out. It really helps the channel. And if you really want to support the channel and have your name displayed on the screen like you see right now, consider becoming a member and you'll get access to that, these videos early, and access to updates on my own comic I'm writing called Godless. But no pressure, as your viewership is more than enough for me. Also, be sure to check out my second channel, Venomous Hero 2, linked on the card now and in the description below if you want to see a more casual style where I post gameplays, clips, random rants, and whatever the hell else I feel like posting. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.